just need to define a few key terms to make sure there's no confusion here and so that the audience knows exactly what I mean when I use certain terms. So number one, what do I mean when I say the word freedom? Freedom, and this is a little definition that I came up with just because it makes the most sense to me. Freedom is living as you wish without aggression from others as long as it is both physically possible and does not violate the non-aggression principle. Now, let me break that down just briefly. Living as you wish, that is something that is crucial to achieving freedom. Most people today, in my humble opinion, do not live as they wish. They basically live according to the expectations of others, according to the values of others. They follow orders without considering their own unique core values. They basically go through life trying to fit in, doing what they consider to be the societal norm. And this is a recipe for tragedy. The only way, now let me back up. Why are we trying to achieve freedom? I mean, you may or may not agree with this. We're trying to achieve freedom in order to achieve the ultimate goal, the end goal, which is happiness, satisfaction, excitement, content, these positive emotions that fill us with joy, that make us love life, okay? These are the things that we are trying to achieve via freedom. So this is very important. It doesn't matter how much freedom you achieve, how much aggression you remove from your life. If you don't live as you truly wish to live, then you're not going to be able to achieve those end goals of happiness, excitement, joy, satisfaction, those positive emotions. You're not going to be able to achieve those from the freedom that you've already achieved. In other words, it's going to be pointless for you to achieve freedom. Also, you're not going to be able to demonstrate the benefit, the potential benefit of freedom to others and to inspire others to join the freedom movement if you don't live as you wish and you don't achieve those positive emotions. So, and what do I mean by living according to your own unique values? I mean digging down deep, stripping away all the distractions, all the expectations that come from external sources and figuring out exactly what you desire more than anything else, what you want to achieve more than anything else, what kinds of experiences, activities, what lifestyle would truly ignite those positive emotions in your life, in your soul, and by soul I just mean the way you feel inside, figuring those things out. And then using that knowledge to envision the kind of life you want to achieve in the next six months, the next 12 months, the next five, 10 years. And then setting goals and setting up milestones and setting yourself on the course to achieving that life and to fulfilling those desires and living in a way that reflects those core values. I hope you found that a little inspirational because that's what we're going to be talking about in the next episode. It's a really fun process to go through. But anyway, back to my freedom definition. So that's living as you wish. A little caveat I throw into the definition of freedom is as long as it's physically possible, I just want to make this definition a bit more airtight. You know, anyone who's like living as you wish, well, hey, that could include magically shape-shifting into a fire-breathing dragon. No, obviously living as you wish only includes those things you can do in reality that are consistent with the laws of physics, forces of nature, that sort of thing. So that's part of my definition, just so it makes sense. But the more exciting aspect of my definition is the part that deals with non-aggression. And this is something freedom lovers should be intimately familiar with. The non-aggression principle is something you really need to understand in order to achieve freedom and to really benefit from this podcast. And it goes like this. If you value happiness, you know, reducing human suffering, uh, increasing the quality of life for human beings in general, if, you know, if you value those things, then it is preferable for you to not commit aggression against others. Now, what do I mean by aggression? 
Aggression, and freedom lovers should also be familiar with this, but I'm just going to you know, touch on it briefly. Aggression is the initiation or escalation of coercion. And the main categories of coercion are physical force, threats of physical force, and fraud. If you are initiating or escalating these types of behaviors against others, you are committing aggression. And by others, I mean other human beings, their bodies, or their legitimately acquired property. And we could go on and on and on. You know, what do I mean by legitimately acquired property? Well, I've explained all this on a web page. And that web page is howtoachievefreedom.com slash N-A-P, which obviously stands for non-aggression principle. So if you have any question about these terms, if you're wondering about, you know, lifeboat scenarios or how the non-aggression principle applies to this or that, check out that web page. I've really gone into it very thoroughly. Don't have time for it in this episode, but I just wanted to throw that out there. So non-aggression principle, so incredibly important and crucial to achieving freedom because aggression is the opposite of freedom. So to achieve freedom, we need to address this two-sided coin of non-aggression. On the one side, we need to live without aggression from others. And to do that, we either need to prevent others from committing aggression against us, or we need to come up with some systems and put those in place so that if others do commit aggression against us, it has little to no effect on our life. And if we accomplish those two things, then we can effectively live our lives as we wish without worrying about that aggression or letting it affect us. The other side of the non-aggression coin is to not commit aggression yourself, to not violate the non-aggression principle. It doesn't matter if you can get away with an act of aggression, if it has some immediate benefit to you, if you consider it relatively harmless. Um, aggression is the opposite of freedom. So every single act of aggression undermines that freedom, undermines the freedom in your culture. It basically demonstrates to others that it's normal to commit aggression, which makes it more likely for them to commit aggression in, in turn. I know it sounds like a cliche, but the whole what goes around comes around phenomenon. Really, if you value freedom, it is absolutely essential that you, from this point on, do not commit aggression against anyone again. You may be thinking, well, what about lifeboat scenarios? I cover that. Once again, howtoachievefreedom.com slash N-A-P. Check that out and we can have that discussion. But um, really, let's just be frank here. The one person you can control is yourself, okay? And if you can't stop the aggression that you are committing, how can you ever expect to reduce the amount of aggression in the world and to influence others and inspire others? So that's my overall explanation for my definition of freedom. Now let's move on to what do I mean by a free society? A free society is a culture.